Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. If you can hear me and see me, give me a hello or a hey in the chat. We're going to get started with our live lesson for today. We'll wait just a moment for everyone to get joined. Can everybody hear me and see me okay? Okay, I see some haze and some hellos. Wonderful. All right, so welcome to today's live lesson. As I said, we're gonna wait just a moment while everyone gets joined in. Today's live lesson is going to be over noun clauses, okay? Noun clause is the topic for today. So while we wait on others to join in, uh, let's do some shout outs. How about we do something a little different today? Tell me where you're from and tell me an interesting or fun fact about you or about anything in the world, okay? So while we're waiting, tell me where you're from and then tell me an interesting or fun fact either about you or just a fun fact in general that you know, okay? Hello, everyone. I see lots of haze. <laughs> All right. I see some watching from India and from Greece, Vietnam, and Pakistan, Bangladesh. Hello. Thank you for joining today. Where else? Turkey. Indonesia, Russia, amazing. And I am in the United States today, so I am giving my lesson from Tennessee in the US. I see someone from Brazil, but also watching from the US. Canada, let's see. All right, someone give me some, some interesting facts, some fun facts about yourself. I haven't seen any fun facts yet. Tell me something interesting about you or just an interesting fact that you know about the world. I'll go first. Something interesting about me, let's see. I've told my, my students on Cambly this before. Um, I have a grandmother who is Japanese. She's from Japan. So my mother is half Japanese. Um, but I don't speak Japanese, unfortunately, and I've never been to Japan. So that is an interesting fact about me. So now you tell me something interesting about you. Let's see. I'll wait just a moment. Where else are we seeing? Afghanistan, someone's watching from Afghanistan, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and France. <laughs> Someone asks, why have I never been to Japan? Uh, my grandmother actually lived in the United States, so I didn't know any family in Japan, and I just haven't had the chance to go there. But one day, I would like to travel to Japan. Okay. Mohammed said, my mother is from Dhaka. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And your father's from Silhet. I also don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, someone said Coca-Cola was originally green. I'm going to look that up. Is that true? I didn't know that. I've always known Coca-Cola as being red. So Coca-Cola was originally green. Very interesting. That's a fun fact. What else? Someone was born in the US, but they're in India, I think, right? You're born in the US, but you live in India? Let's see, someone had a friend who just got married Last week, congratulations to your friend. Someone asked my name. My name is Molly. <laughs> I am Molly. 
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for telling me where you're watching from and giving me some fun facts about you. You can keep typing them in the chat if you wish, and I'll go back and read them later, okay? So we're going to get started. Again, today's topic is noun clauses. So today's topic is a little complex, okay? It might be a little complicated, but it's okay. We're gonna work through it slowly. And if you have any questions today, please feel free to type them in the chat and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. Remember that if you need to leave early or if you join in late, this lesson will be recorded and you can go back and watch it again on Cambly's YouTube channel as many times as you need, okay? It will be there permanently. So, who can tell me what is a noun and what is a clause? Today our topic is noun clause. So what is a noun and what is a clause? Let's see. Who can tell me in the chat what's a noun and what is a clause? Not a noun clause together, but what's a noun and what's a clause? Oh, I see some more interesting facts coming in now. <laughs> Let's see, someone, someone can stick their tongue to their nose. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't stick my tongue to my nose. <laughs> That's a good talent, an interesting talent. I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so a noun, very good. A noun is a person, a place, a thing, or an idea, right? That is a noun. And a clause can be a group of words that make up another part of a sentence, right? Usually they have a subject and a verb, okay? And clauses can be independent or dependent. So a noun clause is a dependent clause, okay? It is a dependent clause. It's a group of words that have a subject and a verb and they can take the place of a noun in a sentence, okay? So essentially a noun clause is a noun, but a little longer, okay? It can replace a noun in a sentence. So that's what we're gonna look at today, what it is, how we use it, how to identify it, and we're also going to look at some functions of a noun clause. So. There are many functions of a noun clause, but we're only going to look at five functions of the noun clause today because of time, because we don't have too much time. All right, so here's an example. If we have a sentence, I know her name, that's just a regular sentence. If we want to use a noun clause, we can change that sentence to, I know what her name is. So the noun clause in the sentence is, what, her name is, okay? That is a noun clause. Maybe you say, I don't understand what a noun clause is. In that sentence, there's a noun clause. I don't understand what a noun clause is. So what a noun clause is in this sentence is a noun clause, <laughs> all right? So why do we use noun clauses? We use them to ask questions, we use them to answer questions, and we use them to add emphasis, okay? Now, something that is important to know is that a noun clause will typically begin with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction. So I have this chart here and it's really important. Um, we're going to use this throughout today's lesson so that you can refer to it um, and easily identify the noun clauses in the sentences that we're going to go through today, okay? So one easy way to identify a noun clause is by looking for the relative pronoun or the subordinating conjunction, okay? So I have my relative pronouns in blue and my subordinating conjunctions in red. All right, so again, a noun clause is a group of words, a dependent clause that has a subject and a verb. That's important. A noun clause must have a subject and a verb and typically a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction and it acts as the noun in the sentence, okay? 
We use it maybe when the noun, um, we want to express more, okay? The noun isn't enough and we want to express more. So let's look at some examples. Um, I will try to go through this slowly, okay? I know that this is kind of a, a difficult, complicated topic, so we'll try to go through it slowly. So what we're going to do is go through five ways that a noun clause functions in a sentence, okay? Remember there's more than five, but today we'll just go through five of them. So the first one is as a subject. So a noun clause can function as a subject of a sentence, okay? What is the subject of a sentence? Remember the subject of a sentence is a person, a place, a thing, or an idea doing the action of the verb, okay? I'm going to put this up here so that you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. So let's look at some examples, okay? So the example I'm going to show you has a noun clause acting as the subject in the sentence, okay? So your sentence is, the Cambly students are dedicated, oh, sorry. That Cambly students are dedicated learners is obvious to the tutors who work with them. Okay, this is your sentence. The Cambly stu that Cambly students are dedicated learners is obvious to the tutors who work with them. Okay, so let's identify the noun clause in this sentence. Remember the noun clause needs to have a subject and a verb, and usually it's going to begin with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, okay? So, what do you think the noun clause in this sentence is? This is a subject, a noun clause acting as a subject. So remember, a subject comes at the beginning of the sentence, okay? The subject comes at the beginning of the sentence. So if this noun clause is acting as the subject, where will it be in the sentence? Good guesses, good guesses. But remember, this is acting as the subject. This is acting as the subject. Okay, I see good guesses. I don't think I've seen the right answer yet. This was a tricky one. I gave you a tricky one, the first example. <gasps> Very good. I, that Cambly students are dedicated learners is the noun clause in this sentence that's acting as the subject. So let me underline this for you. That Cambly students are dedicated learners. This is our noun clause acting as the subject. Remember what the subject is. So that Cambly students are dedicated learners. That's our noun clause, okay? Very good guesses. I know this is tricky, we're gonna keep going. Okay, let's look at another example. Our next example is where we will end up is anybody's guess. Where we will end up is anybody's guess. This is a noun clause or identify the noun clause as acting as a subject in this sentence. So remember, the noun clause needs the subject, the verb, and usually it's going to begin with the relative pronoun or the subordinating conjunction. I'll give you just a minute. Very good. Great job. I forgot to mention, so you're probably thinking, how do I know if it's a noun clause? A good way to identify if it's a noun clause is to see if it answers the question, who or what? Okay, who or what, or maybe in this case, where, okay? Or it'd be what, so what is anyone's guess? What is anyone's guess? Where we will end up. That's how you know it's a noun clause. So very good, I see lots of right answers. So it should be where we will end up is anyone's guess. Sorry, where we will end up is the noun clause, okay? And this is acting as the subject in the sentence. Where we will end up is a noun clause acting as the subject. Great job, okay? 
Now, let's look at a noun clause functioning as a direct object. Okay, a noun clause can function as a direct object of the sentence. Who knows what is a direct object? What is a direct object? I'm gonna test some of your, your grammar knowledge today. <laughs> okay, so a direct object answers the questions what and who. So a noun clause can function as a direct object in the sentence. For example, let me show you two examples. Molly doesn't understand why the package hasn't arrived yet. Molly doesn't understand why the package hasn't arrived yet. Okay, so in this sentence, there's a noun clause that is functioning as the direct object. What is the noun clause in this sentence? Who can tell me? What is the noun clause in this sentence? The easiest way to identify is to look for that relative pronoun or the subordinating conjunction. And if you need me to step out of the way, just say, move over, Molly. I, I need to see what's behind you. I know I'm blocking it a little bit. So this one is functioning as the direct object. Remember, a noun clause usually starts with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction. So it can't be Molly doesn't understand because Molly is not a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, right? Good, okay. It should be why the package hasn't arrived yet. Molly doesn't understand why the package hasn't arrived yet. This is the noun clause. The noun clause is why the package hasn't arrived yet. And in this sentence, this noun clause is functioning as a direct object, okay? So we have our first clause, Molly doesn't understand. Remember, we can ask the question, what or who? What doesn't Molly understand? Why the package hasn't, <coughs> excuse me, arrived yet, okay? All right. Let's look at another example. The next example, his father said that he was working late. His father said that he is working late. So first let's identify the noun clause. So how are we going to do that? Let's look for the relative pronoun or the subordinating conjunction, okay? So what is the noun clause in this sentence? His father said that he was working late. Close, I see some answers that are partially correct, but you're missing a word. Now remember, a noun clause has to start with one of these, okay? I know it's hard to see because I'm, I'm standing in the way. <laughs> I'm blocking your view. So let me move so that you can see our list of words, our list of conjunctions and pronouns. Okay, good. So it should be that he was working late. That, we have to use that because that is our relative pronoun, right? So it can't just be he was working late. It needs to be that he was working late, okay? His father said that he was working late. So that he was working late is the noun clause. Now in this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the direct object. How do we know it's functioning as the direct object? We ask who or what. His father said, his father said what? that he was working late, okay? So that's how we know our noun clause is functioning as the direct object. Very good. I know this is moving quickly. We'll practice this in just a moment, okay? <laughs> okay, so the third function, so we've seen a noun clause acting as a subject in the sentence. We've seen a noun clause acting as a direct object. Now let's look at a noun clause acting as an indirect object in a sentence. 
What is an indirect object? We just talked about what a direct object is. What is an indirect object? An indirect object is the recipient of a direct object, right? So what is receiving the direct object, okay? So let's look at some examples of the noun clause as an indirect object. The first one. The contest will award whoever sings the best song a prize. The contest will award whoever sings the best song a prize. So what is our noun clause in this sentence? Let me move so you can see your list of pronouns and conjunctions to help you identify what the noun clause is in this sentence. The contest will award whoever sings the best song a prize. Good. I see one right answer. Good. Okay. Remember, a noun clause is going to begin with one of these words up here behind me, okay, in red and blue. So if your answer doesn't begin with one of these words, it's not the noun clause, okay? So in this sentence, the contest will award whoever sings the best song a prize. Which word from this list do we see in this sentence? Which one? Whoever, right? So that means that's the beginning of our noun clause. When we see whoever, we know, okay, that's where our noun clause begins. Whoever sings the best song is our noun clause. Whoever sings the best song. Good. Why is it whoever sings the best song? Because a noun clause is a group of words that have a subject and a verb and begin with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction. So it can't be the contest will. Why? Because the is not a relative pronoun or a conjunction, okay? So it has to be whoever signs the best, sings, I'm sorry, I can't read backwards. Whoever sings the best song, okay? Now, this noun clause is acting as an indirect object in the sentence. What is an indirect object? It is the recipient of the direct object, okay? So if we take away the noun clause, our sentence is, the contest will award a prize, okay? The contest will award a prize. Who is receiving the prize? Who is the recipient of the prize? Whoever sings the best song, okay? So that is our noun clause as an indirect object, all right? Let's look at another example. She chose to photograph whomever was willing to pose for her. She chose to photograph whomever was willing to pose for her, okay? Now, let's take a look at what is the noun clause in this sentence. Remember, the noun clause needs to start with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, okay? I'll say that as many times as I need to so that you remember. Oh, that's right. A noun clause starts with a, a subordinating conjunction or a relative pronoun. So if I don't see one of these words at the beginning of the clause, it's not a noun clause. Good. I think you guys got it. <laughs> I see lots of right answers. Very good. And remember, the noun clause also needs a subject and a verb. Okay? So. It should be whomever was willing to pose for her. Very good. Because whomever, right, whomever we see here as a relative pronoun, sorry, whomever, we have our subject and we have our verb. 
Now, this noun clause, whomever was willing to pose for her, is acting as an indirect object. How do we know? Because whomever was willing to pose for her is receiving the action of her taking the photograph, okay? They are receiving that photograph. Okay, very good. Let's see, we're gonna go over two more and then we're gonna take a break and cover some questions and then we're going to practice because I know this is a lot, okay? So the fourth function of a noun clause in a sentence is object of the preposition, okay? So we've seen a noun clause functioning as a subject, as a direct object, as an indirect object, okay? Now, let's look at a noun clause functioning as the object of the preposition. Um, no worries, if you missed the first 10 minutes, you can go back and watch it again after, okay? It'll be on the Cambly YouTube channel. I see some people joined in late, don't worry. Okay, what is a preposition? A preposition is placed before the noun, in this case, the noun clause. A preposition is placed before the noun clause to show relationship with nearby words or a nearby word, okay? So if you study prepositions, you know we have many, many prepositions in the English language. So let's look at two examples of this, okay? All right. They said they sold the house to whoever made the best offer. They sold the house to whoever made the best offer, okay? What is our noun clause in this sentence? I'm, I'm going to cover the chart this time to see if you remember what does a noun clause usually begin with? It should be a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, okay? So, Good, good, I see some right answers. Very good, great job. It should be whoever made the best offer. Why? Because whoever is here, our relative pronoun, okay? So we know our noun clause starts with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction. Whoever made the best offer, okay? We have our subject, we have our verb. This is a dependent clause. So in this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the object of a preposition. How can we identify this? Because there is a preposition before the noun clause, okay? So how do we know if the noun clause is acting as the object of the preposition? There will be a preposition before the noun clause. So in this case, to is our preposition. They sold the house to whoever made the best offer. Okay, great job. Let's look at one more example. I like to keep a schedule of when I have upcoming meetings. I like to keep a schedule of when I have upcoming meetings, okay? So what is the noun clause in this sentence? What is the noun clause in this sentence? Do I need to step aside so that you can see our relative pronouns and subordinating conjunctions? Great job, I think you guys are getting the hang of this. Very good, okay? So, our noun clause is when I have upcoming meetings. Great job, because it starts with when, okay? When I have upcoming meetings. Now, in this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the object of a preposition. How do we know that? Because of, of, okay? Of is our preposition. All right, very good. Some of you beat me to the punch. You already said the preposition is of. <laughs> Great job. Okay, 
Let's look at the last function of a noun clause in a sentence for today. So we have a noun clause as a subject, as a direct and indirect object, as the object of a preposition. Lastly, we're going to look at a noun clause functioning as a subject complement, okay? As a subject complement. So a subject complement follows a linking verb and it describes or identifies the subject, okay? This is what a subject, subject complement is. Now I'm putting these up here so that you can remember what is the subject, what is the direct object, Okay, what is a subject complement? Just for reference. Okay, so let's look at two more examples of this. And then we're going to practice, okay? Coffee is what wakes me up in the morning. Coffee is what wakes me up in the morning, which is true. I haven't finished my coffee this morning yet, so I'm still waking up. What is the noun clause in this sentence? Coffee is what wakes me up in the morning. Maybe some people prefer tea. I prefer coffee. Good, great, 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 great. So your noun clause is what wakes me up, or what wakes me up in the morning. What wakes me up? Coffee is what wakes me up in the morning because of what? Okay, it begins with what, it has a subject, what, and it has a verb, wakes. Coffee is what wakes me up in the morning, okay? Now, in this sentence, the noun clause is acting as a subject's complement. How do we know what is a subject's complement? Let me move out of the way for a moment. Remember, a subject's complement follows a linking verb and it describes or identifies the subject, okay? So our subject of the sentence is coffee. So what about coffee? We need to describe it or identify it. Coffee is what? It's what wakes me up in the morning, okay? We're describing the subject coffee. So in this sentence, the noun clause is acting as the subject complement, okay? All right, let's look at one more example of this and then we're gonna practice. We'll review and then we'll practice. <laughs> $20 is what I have in my backpack. $20 is what I have in my backpack. I don't have $20. I think I have like $2. <laughs> $20 is what I have in my backpack. What's the noun clause in this sentence? What is the noun clause? Perfect. You all are amazing. What I have in my backpack, good. What I have in my backpack. $20 is what I have in my backpack is the noun clause. It's acting as a subject complement. Why is it the subject complement in this sentence? Because $20 is our subject, is is our linking verb. What about $20? We need to identify or describe it. What about the $20? It's what I have in my backpack, okay? I'm identifying that $20 as the $20 that I have in my backpack, okay? All right, great job. So before we practice, let's do a quick review, okay? I know that was a lot of information. So a noun clause. A noun clause is a dependent clause or a group of words that has a subject and a verb Okay, it always has to have a subject and a verb, and it functions as the noun of a sentence. Okay, so we use it as the noun of a sentence. Usually we think of a noun as one word. Well, a noun clause can be longer than that, all right? We use a noun clause to ask questions, to answer questions, or to add emphasis. Usually, we can identify a noun clause by asking the questions who or what, all right? So for example, I know what her name is. What do I know? What her name is, all right? And noun clauses usually begin with a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, okay? As we have, 
here, and here. So that's the easiest way to identify a noun clause. You're looking for one of these words, okay, in the sentence. A noun clause can function as different things in a sentence. Today, we covered five of those functions of a noun clause, okay? The noun clause functions as a subject in a sentence, a direct object, an indirect object, the object of a preposition, and as a subject complement. So the noun clause has many functions in a sentence, okay? Which is what makes it so complex. <laughs> All right. So if you have questions, type them in the chat. I'll be looking. I'm going to go ahead and start with some practice because I know we're almost out of time, okay? So what I'm going to do is give you one, two, three, four, five sentences, okay? I'm going to give you five sentences that have a noun clause. Listen carefully. I want you to identify the noun clause and I want you to tell me what the noun clause is functioning as, okay? So first identify the noun clause and then tell me what is its function in the sentence? Is it the subject in the sentence, the direct object, the indirect object, the object of preposition, or the subject complement? Okay, so I put these up here to kind of help you. Um, once you identify the noun clause, how do I know if it's the subject? Oh, okay, because it's the person, the place, the thing or the idea that's doing the action, okay? All right, are you ready? Someone said, let's do practice. All right, let's practice. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> I love all of you too. <laughs> all right, English teachers dispense wisdom to whoever will listen. We try. English teachers dispense wisdom to whoever will listen. First, tell me, what is the noun clause? And then tell me, what is the noun clause's function in this sentence? Okay, I'm going to try and move a little bit out of the way so that you can refer to the information in the back in case you need some help. Good. <laughs> You guys are amazing. I see lots of correct answers of the noun clause. Perfect, okay, so you've got the noun clause. All right, the noun clause is whoever will listen. Whoever will listen, perfect. Now tell me, what is the function of this noun clause in the sentence? What is the function? Is it functioning as the subject, the direct object, the indirect object, object of preposition, or subject complement? What is it functioning as? Good, I see some right answers. Good, good. It is functioning as the object of the preposition. Great job. Why? Because there's a preposition right here before the noun clause. Two is our preposition, okay? Two is our preposition. So our noun clause is whoever will listen. Two is our preposition. So in this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the object of the preposition. Great job. I think I put the answer here, but you don't need to see that. <laughs> Good job. Okay, next one. Same thing. Identify the noun clause first, and then tell me what is its function in the sentence, all right? Here is your sentence. My teacher usually gives whoever completes, this is completes, the homework by Friday extra credit. My teacher usually gives whoever completes the homework by Friday extra credit. What's the noun clause and what's the function of the noun clause? I'll give you just a moment. And no worries if you answer incorrectly, that's why we're here, right? We're not here to get all of the right answers. We're here to learn, and it's okay if you answer wrong. Don't worry. <laughs> Nobody is always right all the time. Wrong answers are necessary when you're learning English, okay? Okay, good, I see lots of correct answers. So the noun clause is whoever completes the homework by Friday, 
okay? Whoever completes the homework by Friday, good job. So now, what is its function? Whoever completes the homework by Friday, what is the function of this noun clause in the sentence? Is it the subject, direct object, indirect object, subject complement, or object of preposition? This one's tricky. Now remember, an easy way to look at this is take away the noun clause. And your sentence is, my teacher usually gives extra credit. Without the noun clause, my teacher usually gives extra credit. Okay? That should help you identify what its function is. I see some right answers and some not right answers, but that's okay. We're going to talk about it. So in this sentence, it's an indirect object. Okay, this one was tricky. Why would it be an indirect object? So our sentence without the noun clause is, my teacher usually gives extra credit. Extra credit is the direct object, okay? Extra credit is the direct object in the sentence, which makes whoever completes the homework by Friday the indirect object, right? Because the indirect object is the recipient of the direct object. So, extra credit is the direct object. What is my teacher giving? She's giving the extra credit. Who is receiving the extra credit? That's the indirect object. Whoever completes the homework by Friday. Okay? Good job. All right, three more. I know. I know I'm hurrying. <laughs> you guys have places to be. Maybe it's your bedtime. We're almost done. What the teacher said was really inspiring. What the teacher said was really inspiring. What is your noun clause? And what is the noun clause's function? What is the noun clause and its function? Good, good. Okay, your noun clause is what the teacher said. What the teacher said. Great job. And what's it functioning as in this sentence? What the teacher said. What is its function? This one should be easier. Should be easier. What the teacher said was really inspiring. It should be. The subject, in this sentence, it's functioning as the subject. Remember, the subject usually comes at the beginning of the sentence, right? So usually when you see the noun clause at the start of the sentence, it's functioning as the subject, okay? Good job. All right. Next one. The wonderful thing about Cambly is that there are so many amazing students. The wonderful thing about Cambly is that there are so many amazing students, which is true, okay? You guys are amazing. So tell me, what's the noun clause of this sentence? And then tell me, what is the function of this sentence? Good. Some of you have... Part of it right, you're just missing one word. Okay, good, uh-huh. So remember there, there isn't a relative pronoun or a subordinated conjunction. So back it up to one, that. Your noun clause needs to start with that, very good. That, there are so many amazing students is your noun clause. That, there are so many amazing students. Now what is the function of the noun clause in this sentence? that there are so many amazing students. This one is a little tricky. It's a little tricky. <laughs> I see some right answers though. I think I see one right answer. It's not the direct object. Good guess though. Try again. It's not the direct object. It should be the subject Complement, okay? In this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the subject complement, okay? So the wonderful thing about Cambly, that's our subject. Our linking verb is 
is, okay? And so we're identifying or describing the wonderful thing about Cambly. That's why, because a subject complement follows a linking verb and it identifies or describes the subject, okay? So our subject is the wonderful thing about Cambly. Our linking verb is is. And then that there are so many amazing students is our noun clause and it's identifying why Cambly is so wonderful, okay? And tutors, there's so many amazing students and tutors. <laughs> That's what makes it great. Good job. Okay guys, last one, last one. They must decide which English course to take. They must decide which English course to take. Okay, what is our noun clause and what's the noun clause's function? <laughs> Somebody said we were all wrong. It's okay to be wrong. I think I did see a few right answers though. So not everyone was wrong. <laughs> that one was tricky. What is the noun clause of this sentence? Good. Very good. It should be which English course to take. They must decide which English course to take. Now, what's the function of the noun clause? Which English course to take is, is it the subject, the direct object, the indirect object? What's its function? Which English course to take? Good. I see one right answer. I see more than one now. <laughs> In this sentence, the noun clause is functioning as the direct object. Why? Remember, the direct object can answer the question, who or what? So they must decide what. What must they decide? Which English course to take? So our noun clause is functioning as the direct object in this sentence. Very good. Okay, let's uh, finish out with one last thing. So... I want you to create your own sentence with a noun clause by completing this sentence, okay? I love blank. And this, you need to create your own noun clause, okay? If you don't want to do this, it's okay. I'll read some of the answers before we finish out our lesson for today. So let's see, my example. Um, I love that all of you joined the live lesson today. I love that all of you joined the live lesson today. So in my example, that all of you joined the live lesson today, that's the noun clause of the sentence, okay? So let's see. Remember, a noun clause needs to have a subject and a verb, and it needs to begin with a relative pronoun and a subordinating conjunction. So I see some good examples, but they aren't noun clauses, okay? Use some noun clauses. So I love, I love how, what? Or I love when, blank. Or I love that, blank, okay? That's how you make a noun clause. Let's see. I love that all of you are doing live lessons today, good. <laughs> I love whoever loves the world. <laughs> Let's see, what else? I love whoever is very kind. Good. I loved that I or I love that I watched this video. Very good. I love how teacher Molly is teaching us. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Very good. These are some great examples. Great job. I'm trying to keep up. There's so many good examples. Good. All right, everyone. This is the end of today's lesson. Um, I'm going to move this way just a little bit in case you want to take a screenshot. I know some of you like to screenshot. Um, don't forget if you joined late today, this will be recorded and uploaded on Cambly's YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch it again. Um, Rewatch it, fast forward, whatever you need to do in case you didn't understand something or you joined in late, all right? Really quickly, for any of you who are new or who are not already on Cambly, Cambly is an online English learning platform. You can connect with tutors 
all around the world who are native English speakers to help improve your English, okay? Tutors are available any time of the day. You can find someone online and ready to help you. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for joining today. I hope you all have a better understanding of what a noun clause is. Maybe it's something you can go and practice in your Cambly lessons with your tutors, all right? I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.